Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me at TEDx Westford University, Sharjah. Today I want to talk to you about bubbles. No, not the bubbles in our sparkling waters or sugar-infused toxic drinks. I want to talk to you about a deeper, more substantial kind of bubbles, the ones that surround us and ones that sometimes influence our lives. A bubble is defined as a social or an economic phenomenon with a substantial impact on an industry or an economy. Let me give you some examples. Imagine a place where you pay money to put poison in your body. That would be a health bubble. Or imagine a society where a doctor that saves lives is less important than a half-naked dancer on a screen. Now, that's very hypothetical, would never happen, but that would be a social bubble. Or imagine spending 14 years in school preparing for a job, only to end up unemployed. That's an educational bubble. <laughs> the reason I like to use the word bubbles to describe those highly irrational phenomena is one, I'm not a very big fan of the word conspiracy. And two, someone once told me that bubbles is the only word in the English language that you can't look serious while you're saying. And for someone who's as sarcastic as I am, that suits the purpose very well. So think about it. Economic bubbles, educational bubbles, even the bubbles of our daily routines. We all have to navigate those invisible barriers without often understanding them. Now, some bubbles, they burst very dramatically, like the housing bubble of 2008 or the dot-com. Others are a lot more subtle. They quietly shape our lives. I believe that today there are bigger bubbles at play than there were at any given point in history. Bubbles that are more like tsunami waves, changing the very core of our presence and our existence. And today, I want to discuss a few of those bubbles, hoping that understanding them might unlock a slightly better life for everyone. So let me start with one of the most widespread bubbles we have around today, success. Everybody talks about success. Everybody is a success preacher now. Everybody wants to be successful. I think everyone in this room is trying to be successful. Yet, most people do not know what their success is or what their success means. I often ask people, what is success to you? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it a cool Instagram account? Now, success, like love, is not a one-size-fits-all product. Everyone should have their own definition of success. Yet, we live in a world that's trying to impose a single metric of success on all of us, riches and fame. We are always judged by our numbers of followers and our bank statements, and that's a bubble. We're also living in a world where we are told that an entertainer with a million viewers is more important than a doctor. That's a bubble. We are also told that spending half our life at school learning things we will never ever use in our practical life is the right thing to do. And that's a bubble. I think of all of those bubbles coming together to create what I refer to as the bubble of all bubbles, or a bubble of distorted reality. Since a very young age, we are fed dopamine spikes, and that forms our first impression of happiness. And then we're thrown into a schooling system that decides what we can or cannot be. And then we're told that a good job is the way to go, only to wake up many, many years later, as if from a coma, to realize that the sugar we were fed is actually killing us, the education that we got just made us more stupid, and that the good job actually wasted all our full potential, leaving us with a confused, sad, depressed, and mostly highly unfulfilled generation. So for the rest of my time today, I want to help you burst two bubbles that I think can substantially improve your life. The first is a bubble of truth. Think of all those fallacies and bubbles I mentioned fizzing in a glass of clear water, very much like a sparkling water. Those bubbles, they blur the clarity of it. They distort its reality. And that's very much like what our society or our reality is today. Our realities are highly distorted. And I do not think that this distortion is natural or coincidental. I fundamentally believe there are forces actively working at further distorting our realities. Our generation is plagued by what J. Cole would refer to as 
false prophets, people who preach an unattainable and usually unacceptable way of life. In Islam, we say, Al-Hikmah, Dalatul Mu'min. Wisdom is the lost prophecy of a believer. And if we look at who modern world society today considers influential or exemplar, we will find that there is a massive lack of wisdom. And this is why most people in today's world cannot differentiate between an entertainer and an influencer. And it's extremely important to differentiate between entertainers and influencers. Because just like you wouldn't take advice from a circus monkey on healthcare, you should not shape your life around someone whose sole purpose is to collect follows and likes on social media. <laughs> and then when you go and seek the truth, or when you burst the bubble of truth, you will find that most people are not interested in the truth. Most people are not actually interested in the truth of things, and that is why you will find that most people are more likely to follow a clown than, say, an astrophysicist. And this is precisely why it's okay not to be most people. It's okay not to be influenced. And it's okay to have your independent view on things. And it's imperative you never follow a clown anywhere. It usually doesn't end well. Now, the reason most people prefer to follow clowns than, say, scientists is ease. And believe me when I tell you there is nothing more toxic than the promise of ease and comfort. Yet. There is nothing more attractive to more people than that, which takes me into my second point, second bubble, the bubble of a struggle-free life. If we observe history, we will see that any meaningful achievement didn't come without its fair share of struggle and suffering. If we observe deeper, we will also see that the quantum of suffering is directly related to the quantum of success. I understand there are people in the world today preaching get-rich-quick schemes and a struggle-free life scheme. I even see that seep and infiltrate our parenting and our upbringing of new generations. We are trying to upbring generations in struggle-free environments and stress-free environments. What the data tells us, what history tells us, is that a struggle-free environment is an achievement-free environment. A stress-free environment is an achievement-free environment. And you can apply that to anybody you think of as successful in any domain. If you look at business, whether it's Musk or Bezos, they've suffered. If you look at sports, you'll find Messi or Ronaldo, they've done their fair share of suffering. Even our Prophet وسلم, has suffered. So if anybody thinks they're going to achieve anything without struggle and strife, not only are they living in a bubble, but they're absolutely delusional. A very wise man called Douglas Malik wanted to teach his children the single law of success or the single law of life. And so he wrote a poem, and in that poem he says, The tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light and stood out on the open plain and always got its share of rain never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease. The stronger winds, the stronger trees. The further sky, the greater length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and sand, by rain and snow, in trees and men, good timbers grow. And where thickest lies the forest growth, you'll find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, whose broken branches show the scars of many wounds and much of strife. This is the common law of life. Now, a very long time ago, people understood that the common law of life was an honest struggle in the pursuit of achievement, not a get-rich-quick course, not a hack. 
and certainly not a stress-free environment. So despite everything the world is trying to tell you today, trust me when I say there is no shame in struggle. There is no shame in hard work. There is no shame in suffering to obtain your objectives. So when you go out there to the world and you're in the street and someone stops you and stucks a camera to your face and asks you, what do you do for a living? Tell them, I struggle for a living. Wallah ta'ala alimu ahkam, thank you all very much. It's good to you.